simply seeing the correct way in which things should be, things should be, okay? Truth is always anti-topical. This is, you gotta remember this. It's always anti-topical, right? Because it is the topic, right? It's the foundation. If there's no truth, there's no foundation. Hearing the right, the legitimate way <coughs> that God, that the Spirit, put it this way, this, there's laws at work. The Spirit, the, excuse me, the law of the Spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. Right? The law of the enforcer of life. Think about it that way. The Holy Spirit is the one who enforces, but we have to choose whether or not to agree. Otherwise, we're under the law of sin and death. What is sin and death? Sin means to miss, to not hit your goal, to come up short, to, you know, to mess up the end game, so to speak. Like, you didn't, you didn't, the whole purpose of doing this was this, and you didn't do it. That's sin. You miss. You drop the ball. It's all whatever, right? And death just means to stop because of something. Right? Sin and death. Okay? Knowing... Okay, going back. Knowing the right version of things <coughs> is not to tell others the right version of things. The reason is not to tell the others. The reason is to benefit oneself. Right? Not to be responsible for everybody else. Well, I'm not saying don't be your brother's keeper, but you have to have some sincerity <coughs> about what you value not just be a, you know, be a Wi-Fi repeater, just be a signal booster, just be a, a sheep, so to speak, or, you know, let's say it in a negative way, you know, Bible, both the Bible and the world uses it, uh, oh, you're just a sheep, that, that's just in reference to just following, yeah, okay, well, we're God's sheep, how's that, we were meant to live that way, in certain perspectives, right? Oh God, we're not going to be misled. He cares for us. He loves us, right? He's the good shepherd. The good shepherd, right? Life is good, right? It is. Life is good. But what you're, you know, oh, no, life's horrible, all this blah, blah, blah. But everybody that says that, it's like, well, that's not life. That's death. You're living, you're living death. You're not living life. You're living death. It sounds like a zombie. The living dead. <laughs> trying to be goofy. <coughs> Hopefully that didn't trigger the most sensitive of you. Knowing <coughs> yeah, let's go be with God. Get some get some mitigation. I got born again when I was three and there was drama in the house and I remember not being affected by it once I noticed it. I think it was kept from me until after I got saved. I had a dream there was a demon in the house uh, before I got saved. I don't know if it was the night before or what, but I was thinking how do I deal with this? How do I, what do I do? Right? My, okay, this was the dream. I woke up. This this was a dream. I, I woke up and it was nighttime and everyone's asleep and no one would wake up for any reason. They're all asleep. And there was this thing around the corner in the house. It was hiding in this sort of I don't know. It was like a sort of like a closet space with no door, right? It was just standing there and it meant me harm. I knew that it meant me harm. It was, there's no way, I was like two or three. There's no way I could defend myself. There's no way, it was literally impossible. This thing was a massive muscle, right? And it reminded me of a gorilla and I would I would get freaked out when I would see gorillas. A picture of a gorilla, I'd get all scared and remind me of that thing. I've never felt fear so intense as that. And then I got, and I accepted Jesus in my heart. Um, yeah, my, my mom had walked through the room, told my siblings about Jesus, and then left the room. She just walked in, told the story, and then walked out. I thought, well, I, you know, I was pulled. I want, I want Jesus in my heart. And so I followed her, and I told her that. You do? She's all excited. And so she led me to prayer, and I remember this ball of... And I didn't remember this until my late 30s, maybe five, six years ago. But all I remember is feeling different. 
But what was revealed to me was a ball of light appeared above above my head and came down and rested inside me. And from then on, things were different, right? And so I remember having a lot of atmospheric mitigation, right? I could I, I wasn't I wasn't emotionally affected by the by any negativity uh, in the house. And throughout most of my childhood, I went to a school. Everyone, everyone, but maybe a handful of people were, were mean. <laughs> everyone was mean. Um, most of the time it's like, whatever. Every once in a while it got to me, but most of the time it just, I just shrugged it off. I had a dream where I was flying over my school when I was five. I was just flying. I could see everybody. That was nice. So there's provision, right? But you have to go to the place where God's at. And you get all the answers. Or the solutions. Solutions are greater than answers. Okay, and so what you want to do is you want to find the correct form of things so that when you encounter things, you won't agree with the wrong thing or think of it as a, a potential or think it's a, you know, this, it's gonna, or accept validity. You don't want validity. Truth separates legitimacy from validity. Or I should say validity from legitimacy because legitimacy is the core foundation of everything, right? So, uh, so knowing that the, the good form um, I'm thinking of my, uh, my video two forms and this is the same thing actually let's go in here first guy were you waiting for did you want to go to the shed before me um, yeah, I really did. did you want to wait okay that's cool yeah, let me finish this video and I'm gonna get some more cereal okay and then we'll uh, we'll do our stuff okay So uh, let's see. Where was I at? Um, freedom. Like, but you will have to push back relationally. I encounter a lot of moral snags. When dealing with people, because everyone wants you to do their job for them, or yeah, well, that's I mean, that really isn't that. It's like the, the court of, of entitlement. It's what our it's this biggest societal issue is. But enough talking. I have to go fill needs. I don't have to. That's just the next thing for me to do. So you know, um, if you're triggered, go listen to the and, and bothered. You know, if you're bent on the hopeful expectation, reaction, results, or response, there's another one. I don't remember what it is, but, you know, just taking time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up in due season. But you have to say no to yourself. You have to say no to your flesh first, and then you can catch the energy, and then it won't overwhelm you. And then humble yourself, and then he'll lift you up. And then you'll have these little glimpses, but don't go after the glimpses. Just let them appear, right? I was obsessed for a long time, and I wrote everything down. I still do sometimes because it's all connected. I see how things are connected. I'm sorry, I understand systems. Life is just full of systems. They're all just systems. And there's freedom in between the systems. But you need to be living according to, this, living according to the law of the spirit of life. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're, you can't move. You'll be stuck, on, you'll be stuck in, uh, according to the rules of the system. I sound like Morpheus now. Okay. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Well, then go to where the spirit of the Lord is. <laughs> Take some time. Get some therapy from God. Don't drown yourself in entertainment. Get some, uh, excuse me, get some therapy from God. Just let him fill you up. He is your therapy. That's what people... His presence... It's not his presence. It's him, you being with him. If you're with him, draw near, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Anyone who does these words of mine loves me. Right? And that's... I'm, I think I slapped two partial verses together. <laughs> but it's the truth. If you love God, keep your... keep. If you love me, keep my commandments, is what he said. Right? Um, and it's just, it's so nice. Never think of what James says about 
They're going your way and forgetting what you look like. I wanted to make a video talking about what's over the overwhelming. Overwhelming is not an idea. It's the implication. It's the it's the emotion of it, right? Or feeling. And that's what overwhelms us. It's the energy or expectation that we encounter when we're well, when we encounter things. We encounter uh, and it's, it's it's God I'm talking about. Like we want to make more space for him, right? But it's difficult. And so, if we're willing to be still while the overwhelming is happening, it will pass. You cannot stay free of the storm if you don't choose to, in your own personal life, the decisions that you make to sort of shore up against the overwhelming. That's Because that's something you can do, right? So... Um, in military training, they'll give people impossible tasks. They'll give these, uh, they'll give them whatever the rank is. They'll give them impossible tasks. And they're, the idea is to have that task completed. Right? And um, I do have an example, but that's irrelevant. How you see yourself should not be determined by your emotions. Okay? Do you see how that connects to James as well as the military story? How you see yourself should not be, oh, I can't because of this, I can't because of that. Impossibility is never about ideas. It's always about feeling. It's not saying, oh, that, that can't be. That's dismissive and immature. That doesn't count. I'm talking about how you see yourself. Impossibility is for, you, for yourself, not about for existence. Everything exists in potential. It already exists. We just combine things until it works. You know, how about anti-gravity? You know, um, I have a theory about how that would work. Will it? I, I don't know. I have a theory, though. Is there a way? Yeah. Everything's possible. <laughs> okay? So, your emotions make you forget what you look like because... What, it creates a scenario where you see yourself happy because of something else. And it's you seeing that other thing as the source. Oh, I'm happy because of this. And that's how idols are created, too. So it's all the same. Idolatry. Well, there you go. I mean, it's all connected. See that? Okay, so. What should I name this one? 